Let's hear next one's rock and roll. We're here today in, what town is this? Wayne. <laughs> New Wayne, New Jersey, uh, with my friend Tom Burns. I met Tom about a year ago, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. At uh, a tryout for a guy named Joe Torrey. Joe Torrey runs the Black Sox, which really serve a really unique purpose in this industry. Mm -hmm. He gets players that, for lack of another phrase, would fall between the cracks or need time to develop. He puts them together and gets them on the road and they play against independent teams so they get a chance to get better, right? Absolutely. And uh, they get a chance to be seen. And Tommy approached me, I was with my partner who is the Red Sox scout, and we started talking and he had a really unique story to tell. So tell that. What uh, you, you were drafted when, when? You were 19? Yeah, I was. Uh, I went to Don Bosco Prep High School in Ramsey, New Jersey, and was drafted out of high school in the 34th round. So a little bit oh. later than uh, than you wanted to go in high school. Um, went to one year junior college at Howard Junior College in Texas, um, and up my stock to the 22nd round. And I thought it was uh, good enough to take it at the time. Uh, looking back on it, I probably should have been a little bit more patient and let my career developed more, um, went to a Division I school, um, developed again, um, and, and then, uh, you know, be drafted in my junior year of college. I think, you know, the, uh, the amount of money and uh, the opportunity would have been a little bit different. Um, okay, so 2013 was drafted out of Howard Junior College, went, signed the paper, uh, I believe it was June 8th or something, or June 9th, one of those days, um, and, uh, Played two seasons. Two seasons, I was 19, 20 years old, um, you know, and, and struggled. It, it was a big learning Do you mind program. if I ask, I, I'm sorry for interrupting, you mind yeah. if I ask, because what we're trying to do with mm -hmm. all of the kids and their parents out there is there is a reality mm -hmm. to the industry of baseball. Yeah. They're real, it's, and it's not, it's not fantasy at all. No. It's, it's a really business. Like, yeah, it's, it, it, it's a hard business and what I'm going to fill in the blanks a little bit. What Tom is alluding to is that, uh, he's not alluding, he's telling you very directly, is that the perception of him as an athlete was very different because he went lower in the, in the draft. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. And, and had you, now we're all, always running the risk of injury, right? But had he taken a couple of years to develop himself, mm -hmm that his stock could have elevated, correct? Absolutely. yeah. Okay, and, and, and this does not reflect just on money mm -hmm. that you get as a signing, but also their perception of you mm -hmm. as, as an asset, Yeah. right? Exactly. Okay, so what happened? How'd you get out? What happened? Yeah, so I mean, uh, this is a long story. Um, you know, uh, I was in rookie ball. Um, you know, I signed the papers. I was in rookie ball for three weeks. I, I did well. They used me as a, a spot starter uh, or piggyback starter. Uh, I believe I had one start. Um, you know, I, I did well. I think I went seven or eight innings, um, you know, with 12, 11 or 12 strikeouts. So the numbers were good. The, you know, everything was, was good. Uh, and then I got moved up to short season A in Everett, Washington. And, you know, that's where I'm facing guys who are top 10 rounders, again, junior, seniors out of college. And I'm a 19 year old kid who's pretty raw, doesn't really know his game like I know my game now. And, uh, you know, uh, yep. This is the, you'll see we're gonna talk about Harrison White, who is, mm -hmm. you know, uh, same thing, and Harrison went to short seat, so this is where he he ended up, and you're a thousand percent right. The, the population changes, doesn't it? The competition level changes. It does. These hitters know what to lay off. They know what they're looking for. They have an approach. Um, they, they, ha they know their zone, right? And when you're in rookie ball, these guys are still learning their zone, and it's, it's a little bit easier to have success. And 
and getting moved up at a um, faster pace. Um, I think I was actually the first one moved up in my draft class at the time. And, you know, it was, it was a learning curve and I took it on the chin and I had good outings, I had bad outings. Um, you know, the best outing I had was following up Erasmus Ramirez, which is, he's a bona fide number five in a rotation. And I think he was coming down for a rehab start and he struggled, you know, maybe went two innings and, and then I came in out of relief and I finished the game. I think it was a perfect, however many innings it was. So, um, again, there, there was glimpses of, of uh, you know. And I want to interrupt you there also, yeah, because ahead. this is, uh, you know, uh, I, I, know some, I know a lot of mechanical stuff. Mm -hmm. I've been pitching coach at a couple of colleges, but Tommy and I mostly work on his mental stuff. And the, mm -hmm. this is exactly the point when it's, it was all, the success was always in you, wasn't it? You just had, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, you just mm -hmm. hadn't, so it wasn't your physical ability so much as your ability to execute it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, execution is what I've learned uh, to be the most important thing, you know, over velocity. And again, velocity will open doors, and, and I understand that. And, um, you know, if I don't get the opportunity to go back to affiliated ball, it probably will because of you know, because of the velocity. Um, you know, as a starter last year, I was sitting anywhere between 89, 92, which is, you know, it plays. Absolutely. You know, but again, you need to, um, you know, nowadays average velocity is 92.5 or 93 point, you know, so it, it, it's up there. But listen, there are pitchers in the big leagues that are throwing at my velocity and it's about execution. And in my eyes, it's about winning, right? If you put your team in a good situation to win every day and, you know, you'll get an opportunity so what happened so you went up to short season a and then what went up to short season a uh again had good days had bad days um finished the season there came home for a couple weeks and then went back to instructional league okay so instructional league is uh, essentially uh, the organization wants to work with you a little bit more hands-on and and uh maybe a couple more innings under your belt so did that felt good uh you know obviously i'm very confident and um went into the offseason very confident, you know, set my goals, um, you know, at that time we didn't know each other, but um, my dad always reminded me of setting goals and write it down so you can see right. it and, you know, put it in the bathroom so when you wake up, you look at it. Um, <laughs> great, you know, great a lot, stuff. A lot of big time athletes, they've done that and, and it's worked right. out for them. So um, anyway, I, I, I set the goal to go into, um, I, I did have actually very lofty goals, but um, I set my goal to, to get a starting rotation spot in a full season team. And I actually got that spring training, I got the number five spot in the low A team. So, you know, I did meet my goal. That's um, great. But then, um, you know, pitching well in spring training, I think I, uh, to go back into the memory bank, I had an outing against double A and did well, held my own, you know, um, and you know, pitched well enough to, to get that last starting spot as a 22nd rounder, 20 year That's old great. at the time. That's great. Um, Edwin Diaz was the number one in the rotation. Wow. We had Emilio Pagan. Uh, you know, I always say he was kind of like my big brother when I was in the system. And uh, who else? We had Thiago Rivera, who's a 100 mile an hour guy. He's actually going to play in Japan this year. He, he was up with the White Sox. Um, who else did we have on that team? We had Paul Fry, who's up in the big leagues with the Baltimore Orioles. Um, you know, Jack Reinheimer, who's a utility guy. He's been up there. So, you know, again, a ton of great experiences. And that's the biggest thing I, I take from this game is the experiences. But, um, you know, after that spring training, my last outing during spring training, and again, no excuse, because uh, at the end of the day, it is my career and it is a business. Um, I had 10 days between my last outing in spring training in my first outing of the regular season, All right? So that feel aspect, right, with a hitter in the box and executing pitches, it kind of went away for me, right? So I didn't even get through the first inning, I believe, um, my first start of that 2014 season. You know, so it was rough. And then, you know, they sent me back out for another start, you know, that five or six days later and, you know, a little bit better, but still wasn't there, all right? And then I, I'm not sure if it was two or three starts. They put me in the bullpen and they said, hey, we want to get more appearances out of you. And, you know, I understood, right? I wasn't doing my job as a starter, and it was time to go, you right. know, uh, earn it back as a bullpen guy. And uh, long story short, I'm coming out of the bullpen, 
feeling a little bit more comfortable, more comfortable, and they pull me into the office and they send me back to extended spring training to build me up to be a starter again. All right, so again, they, they showed the faith in me to be a starter and they see that, that value in um, you know, my career projecting as a starter. And they sent me back to Arizona. Um, I was building up, I think, three, four, five innings. Um, and, and then it was time to get sent back out. Originally, they told me I was going to get opening day back in Everett, Washington, right. which was short season A, right? So I, in my head, I'm saying, okay, fresh start. Uh, I got opening day here. Um, and then I think it was a couple hours before my flight, they gave me a call and they said, you're going back to Clinton to be in the bullpen. Actually, Thiago Rivera went down with an injury and you know, I was next on the list to go back to... You were in Clinton? Clinton, Iowa. I, I grew up about <laughs> 15 minutes from, uh, from there. I've been to that. Oh, really? I've been up? to that. Okay. Yeah, I've wow. been to that. Uh, isn't there a gypsum plant there or something? Gypsum? What's that? Yeah, the, the stuff that sheetrock is made. Isn't there, isn't there oh, a big... I know pl- there's a, a dog food plant. Yes, I, that's ask, it. That's yeah, it. If you ask any minor leaguer, they, <laughs> yes. they say Clinton, and they're like, oh, no, no, no. But, <laughs> no, I, honestly, it, it, I... I was there last, last year and went to uh, spoke to the GM and stuff. That's very okay, funny. Cool. That's very yeah. funny. No, I appreciate little towns like that that are economically... Uh, a little less fortunate, but you know, you, you see the beauty in it, and it's, oh, you know, it's, it's wonderful. Right along the, the Mississippi River, yep, you know, all the way up there. So, you know, cool experience again. Um, and uh, you know, so I get sent back down, get sent back to Clinton. So, um, you know, I think what was the book? My dad, uh, my dad got an audio book, it was uh, Where Nobody Knows Your Name. Have you ever heard that one? No, oh, that's a great one. It's a good baseball. Um, I forgot where we were driving to or from. Uh, and he, you know, we got the audio and it's when no, where nobody knows your name, which is essentially the minor league. Absolutely. You know, so to be able to have success in the minor leagues when there's 10 people in the stands, you know, when there's 30 people in the stands right. and, and it's tough. And when you're 19, 20, 21 years old and, you know, you have to have this accountability and, um, you know, that, that, that aspect of yourself to, to find success. So, um, you know, essentially it's one guy, uh, multiple guys telling their story about, uh, flights to and to from to right. from games, right? So they get moved up. So my story is, you know, I'm getting told I'm going to Everett, Washington, and you know, a couple hours before the flight, I get told I'm going back to Clinton, or maybe the day before, or the day of, right? And then uh, that flight, I woke up at 3:30 for the flight, go to the airport, fly to Detroit, have a two three hour layover from Detroit, fly to um, Chicago, from Chicago right. drive to Iowa. Yep. And then, uh, you know, the game started at usually 6.05, maybe a 7.05 game. I'm there about an hour before the game, right? And in the minor leagues, they do a good job at letting people know, hey, you're pitching today, you're hot, you're not, right? So I get there, there's three guys hot at the time, and, you know, little do I know, it's the sixth or seventh inning, and I get the call, hey, Burns, get in the game. Right, so again, 20 years old, I don't know how to handle this, but, you know, the, the Mariners could have been testing me you know, to see if I'm, right. if I'm able to handle the, the heat, right? And, you know, that outing I wasn't. Uh, next outing I came back, I think I went, you know, three innings and struck out seven and, you know, had a little chip on my shoulder. But then, unfortunately, I felt a little tweak in my lower back and, and then I went on the oh, DL. Okay. And, um, you know, just a turn of events and at 20 years old, you don't know how to really handle it. Um, you know, I remember I had one moment in Beloit um, which is the A's farm system, A ball team. And, uh, you know, I pitched poorly again and I'm in center field and, you know, everyone's in the clubhouse and I'm just, I'm in center field like, is this it? You know, am I not cut out for this? And that was a moment that really, um, it, it really pulled me away from the game. You know, I thought about quitting in the middle of the season and fortunate for me, my dad, he flew out to Seattle when I went to go get an MRI. And, uh, you know, he's done that for everyone in my family. It's, it's, uh, That's wonderful. Yeah, it's, it's very special what he does. Um, you know, so long story short, I'm heartbroken. I don't know how to act. I'm 20 years old. I'm, I'm ready to quit. You know, my dad flies out. He, he says, keep going, you know. And, you know, I go to uh, uh, Arizona to rehab, right? And this rehab process is, like anybody knows, it's, a, you know, very tedious and every day and, uh you know, I felt good after the after the rehab. Um, I was able to spot up my my pitches, and 
I felt good, felt confident, and that December, right, season ends, that December I get a call that, uh, you know, I got released, right? I'm in the gym and I get the call and I just kind of, you know, the fire kind of blew out a little bit, you know, it was uh, right. with the season that I had, um, you know, with uh, just feeling good, again, confident, right? I, no matter what, I'm always going to be confident, right? Even at right. those moments where you're not so confident, kind of like flight or fight, you know, it's either, right. hey, let's fight or, you know, time to go. Um, you know, but when I got that call, it was in my head, it, what I said to myself was, all right, what's next? 